Hey guys, first video back since I've been back from, from Vegas. Um, so I wanted to do this video, but I didn't want it to seem like I'm doing it just because I'm a fixed blade knife maker, knife designer. I don't even consider myself a knife maker. I'm a knife, I'm a hobbyist. At best, I just had a design that came out that was, was pretty good. I designed a knife that was pretty good. But what we're going to talk about in this video is the merits of a fixed blade knife versus a folding knife. So we'll kind of look at them both, probably turn the camera around a little bit, and uh, I'm still thinking how exactly I want to put this together, so there's probably gonna be a little pause. This, this video may take more than a day, but um, that's what we're gonna look at, carrying a fixed blade versus carrying a folding knife and the merits of both. So let's go ahead. If you're wearing headphones, turn the music down because Turn, turn your volume down because here comes the music. I sat down and I thought about how I wanted to say this you know I, I wouldn't have started this video if I hadn't just set myself up and done the intro this video probably wouldn't have happened today because I really wasn't 100% sure how I want to do this so I actually did write a few things down so we're gonna talk about is the difference in carrying a fixed blade and a folding knife now they each have their own merits I will tell you that I have spent the entire time since we got back from Las Vegas only carrying a fixed blade, just because I haven't done it in a while. And, and I've, I've said in the past that, you know, I didn't EDC fixed blades and things like that, but it's not true. I used to carry my Necker all the time. Um, I've carried this small little EDC fixed blade, the, the prototype I made for my daughter and things like that. And so I sat down and I just, I, I made myself do it. I love my folding knives. Don't get me wrong. I don't want you guys to think that this is stop carrying folder knives and buy my stonefish. That's not what it's about. I just realized when I was carrying this, cause I need, I won, wanted to product test two I wanted to I wanted to see how easy it was gonna be for people to carry and that's when I re that's when I remember what it how nice it is to carry a fixed blade especially when I started carrying this this as the one the st uh, sea snake that I made for my buddy Matt I started carrying this you forget you've got it on so let's look at the merits and limitations of both because that's kind of where I was going with this so I do have everything set up. We can turn it around and we can look at them side by side. But a couple of them we're gonna talk about is gonna be side by side. Um, so the big thing about a fixed blade is your deployment. It's already ready to go. So for everyone, not, that's not an issue for everyone, but there are certain groups of people that having something that requires zero anything except I pull it and I grab. That's what this knife was designed for. This is the K-Bar TDI. The advantage to this is its shape. It allows you to carry it, pull it weak hand, which is what it's designed for, to be carried weak hand on the other side of your firearm. This was made for military and police. For you to have a weapon that required nothing. I take it out, it's a pistol grip, it's something I'm, accom I'm accustomed to, the way I hold a gun, and I can just come straight out. I have that forward edge, and I can slash and cut if I need to. If you get it reverse carry, if you've taken martial arts, you will realize that that is an incredibly nice little thing. It's like putting a spur on a rooster when they used to, when they used to do cockfighting, a metal spur. I basically now have amplified my weaponry. I can strike, and now I have added a bladed weapon to that that's in a comfortable grip that still allows me to do some striking. So there are merits to it. Deployment being the first one, there's no second step. When I pull that knife out, it's ready to go. I reach down, I grab it, I've got my knife if I'm using it in that scenario. Positioning. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like put it on and show you guys, but the nice thing, one of the nice things about a fixed blade is I can put that and position that anywhere. I put anywhere on me. I don't, I'm not limited to these two spots because you guys know what happens like if you're like me and you like to carry larger fix, cob, or, larger folding knives, it starts eating up some real estate in your pocket. 
And so therefore, that's the only place you can put it, but that's also the place you're gonna put other things that now it's obstructing and it's in the way. Ah, you don't have that problem. I can put this in the small of my back, I can put an appendix carry off from my pocket, which is what I was doing at the show. You really couldn't tell I had it on, even though it's a large knife. I'm a big guy, I can hide something like that. Small little EDC knife like this, you can pull it further back towards the back back here where you're not necessarily blocking access to your pockets and other things you would want. Um, Cause I'm pretty sure everybody has had that one knife that is tip up carry and the blade is close enough to the, close enough to the uh, end of the scales that you catch your finger on it, you cut the fuck out of yourself. I guarantee every knife guy has had one knife that does that. I have one that does it. Um, it's okay, it's not a game, it's not a game, it's not a deal breaker for me, I just move it to the front of my pocket. The other thing too is back to folding knives. Well, we'll stay with, we'll, we'll finish with fixed blades. So the other one is comfort. Comfort. When you've got a fixed blade knife, the only thing that handle is, is the handle. So you start running into some things where you've got things that are going on where people are like, oh, this knife is so comfortable. It's, they're not saying it's as comfortable as a fixed blade. What they're saying is, is it's as comfortable as a folding knife can get. And let me kind of break that down and, and the way I look at it. These are the two most comfortable folding knives I own, yet they still have issues with the comfort. Pocket clips. Pocket clips, I don't care how good a pocket clip is, it's still gonna bother you, you're gonna feel it in your hand. Pocket clips on these knives are two of my favorites. This is a, a bent clip that Elliot Williamson did for this knife specifically, it's a little different than the others. And the Sabenza clip. The clip on a Sabenza 21, and now the 31, if you watch my video, is about as comfortable as any pocket clip is ever gonna be. Those two knives. Uh, Farron Forge knives usually have a pretty good feel in hand. But a lot of knives come with, an, my friend Ashton, another knife guy, his YouTube channel, we talked about this yesterday. We drastically disagree. He loves deep carry pocket clips would have these big loops on them. I get one of those. If a knife does not have a bent clip option and it's only going to be a deep carry with one of those big loops that almost doubles the thickness of the blade, game stopper, show stopper. I will not buy that knife as much as I like it. His Atom that he has, big pocket clip, wouldn't buy it just because the pocket clip is a showstopper. For me, comfort is the most important thing when I purchase a knife. With a fixed blade, your handle is just your handle, no pocket clip. So it's not your retention device like the clip on a sheath. It's not on there, it's separate from that. Next thing that a folding knife has to be is it winds up being the sheath. So you wind up having to have a broader handle than you necessarily would want in a fixed blade because it has to house the entire, it has to house the entire blade inside the handle. It's nested in, not gonna lie, there's some companies that do it great, but like I said, it's as comfortable as you can get a folding knife. Like I said, these two folding knives are probably the most comfortable folding knives I've ever owned, yet they still have issues. The other issue and limitation and reason that a, a, a fixed blade will always be better is this will not fail unless you break it. As much as I love the Sabenza, as much as I love my Ferrum Forge knives, every folding knife will fail. It will. Eventually, you can get it to a point, you can do enough, you can add enough force to that that you will break your lock and the knife will no longer work and you gotta send it in and get it repaired if possible, if it's repairable. The only way that this stops being a viable option is if you break the blade. There's things you can do with a fixed blade that you just cannot do with a folding knife. So that's the, the handle issue. Now, those are the reasons that positioning, deployment, there's no thought in it. I can just pull it out and it's a ready to go tool. There's things I can do with this that I can't do with a folding knife. But it also has some limitations. This is big and scary. 
this not so much. You can carry a small EDC, like I said, small EDC fixed blade. I carried this the entire weekend of the Vegas show, and there were times I forgot it was there. I would go up back up the room, I'd flop down in bed, and forgot that I was wearing it. Until I was like, oh, what is that? Like 10 minutes after I'd laid down, I was like, that feels weird. But, big and scary. Not so much. Sits down in your pocket. You're not patterning. You're not leaving as much out there that people are going to see it and know that you're carrying something like that. If that's important to you, for me, it doesn't matter. I don't care. California has a very robust open carry rule. You can carry pretty much anything as long as it's visible. You can carry an 18 inch Bowie knife if you want in San Diego, as long as you're abiding by the rules of places you can't take them and places that are, you know, there are certain areas of California that have a length, a length limit. But for open carrying a fixed blade in San Diego, really no rules on that. But in society, people will throw a fit. And if you're drawing attention to that, there's a good chance somebody's going to say something. So that's, that's, my, that's my thing on fixed blades. Now, folding knives, let's look at the pluses of folding knives. We've already looked at the limitations pretty much. I can carry this knife in any clothing. I can toss this knife in my fucking shorts and go to the pool if I'm hanging out with the daughter. I can toss this knife in any pair of pants and pretty much go anywhere. No one's really going to know I got it because it's a folding knife. It sits down in your pocket. You can carry it in any situation, anywhere. I have a small, I have a small folding knife that I carry that goes in my pajama pants because it's not as heavy, but I still have a folding knife. Now, with that being said, it's also not as scary. You, it is so much more acceptable for you to pull a folding knife out and use it than it is to pull this out and use it. But if you were to look, there's not that much difference in blade size or handle size. These knives are comparable in size. I think the knife I designed is maybe a half inch longer. Blade is broader. It's a little thicker. It's more robust. Yet this is not scary. This is. So it's a perception thing. A lot of it is a perception thing. Um, but like I said, they both have their merits. And I'm not saying that you should just stop carrying folding knives and carry my knife. That's not what I'm trying to do here. Just laying out for you guys the merits of maybe a small, small bladed fixed blade, small EDC fixed blade, like this little one that I'm work that I worked on and, and I'm trying to get out. This is the this was basically like my bird and trout knife kind of version. I have the warny version of it. I'm trying to get these out, but I like a small EDC fixed blade, a neck knife. This could easily be in the field, could be carried as a neck knife. So could this one. It's just, they have their merits and they have their downsides. Just like with everything, plus and minus. Now, if, you, if you're a guy like me that comfort in hand is, is that's one of the prime, prime things that I look for in any knife. A small fixed blade might be the way to go because like I said, the handle on a fixed blade is simply that. It is just the handle. It's nothing else, it is the handle. And I kind of forgot that until I carried this for, I've been carrying this pretty much exclusively. I carry this while I'm around the house. If I'm going somewhere in the car, I'll take it out and then I'll go so as long as I know it's someplace that it's not gonna cause problems. And it's, it's comfortable to carry. I'm a big guy, I can carry a fixed blade. But it's not acceptable everywhere. Not that it's not acceptable, it's just, it's looked at differently, even though they're, they're basically the same tool. One is tactical and scary, and one is a traditional thing that you would have in your pocket. They're the same thing. So that being said, guys, I don't wanna run this video too long. I'm gonna try and shoot another video today. Um, not the one with the special surprise that I picked up at Brian Nadeau's table at Sharp by Design. That is coming, I have more that I want to look at and do with that before I just turn around and do the video. Um, it is not mine. I want you guys to think like I'm always complaining about money that I bought a fucking $1,800 knife. I did not. A customer had me purchase that and the payment for me to purchase that knife was that it gets to be on my channel. So that's coming and I'm also gonna try and get a video. You guys know I've got, I've got uh, mystery boxes. These boxes are higher quality than the last set 
they're gonna be $50 a set. I'm gonna get that video put up and I'll get those out because it was stuff that was donated to the channel um, for me to, to do videos on and then sell. So I'm going to get that video done, hopefully today. So one shot, one, we're not gonna flip these around. You guys know what a fixed blade and a folding knife look like. It's just my take on it. This was just kind of like me pontificating. For those of you that say I use word two big words, that means to talk a lot about something <laughs> with no real end game. So guys, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but tell me why. Uh, in this corner is going to be a link to one of the gathering videos. I haven't decided which one yet, which one is my favorite. Then down here is going to be Patreon link um, for those of you who choose to support the channel. Uh, hopefully more people start to support the channel because I have some things planned that I would like to do that require a little bit of travel. And I'm not gonna be able to do it without a little bit of support. That's what the Patreon was designed for. And up in this corner will be a subscription link if you're not already subscribed. Go ahead and click that and then click the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. I am going to try and put up more stuff. So um, since I'm doing less live feeds, I'm going to try and actually record stuff. And I'm going to do a video that explains why I've been doing so many live feeds, but not right now. Guys, it's been 14 minutes on this video. Probably going to be closer to 15 or 16 once I get everything edited and put in the initial intro. You guys take it easy. I love you. Have a good day and I'll talk to you later.